If you know me, you know that this past spring and summer, I was hyper-focused on the city boy style, which is why I was calling it city boy summer. Summer, unfortunately, has ended, and so I want to see if we can talk about what city boy fall will look like. Before we get any further, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is a great tool to build your own personal website. If you're new here, city boy is a term coined by the Japanese lifestyle magazine Popeye, which has been around since the 1970s. Even though it does focus on men's style, it works for me and what I like to wear, and so I love flipping through it and seeing the differences between what sort of fashion and style is going on in Japan and what we have here going on in New York City. The issue I have with me today is the October fashion issue, and it mostly focuses on the Amatora or Japanese Americana style, which encompasses a lot of different things. There's elements of workwear, military surplus, American and British traditional, almost preppy styles. And in this issue, there's also a lot of outdoorsy sort of corp core. And all of this is mixed in and filtered through a very Japanese sensibility. So there's minimalist aspects and there's also different silhouettes that you might not see as much here in the West. I wanna go through what I've been seeing in these magazines and online, specific brands that I think are great for fall and winter, specific items even, and also some general styling tips for how I think these items are best worn. Not all of these brands are gonna be Japanese, but I wanna start off with some Japanese brands. Three months ago, Orly had a spring summer collection actually for 2025 and I thought it was wonderful and can totally work for the fall as well. There's, I mean, a full suited look here, a leather jacket. They usually do brighter colors, which is not my personal taste, but I think it was a little bit more muted in this last collection and still stayed true to their really gorgeous construction. You can also obviously go back and look at their autumn winter 2024 show though i think i prefer the spring summer one a little bit some of the styling things that i've been seeing both here and in the magazine is something that a lot of people were doing last fall and winter as well which is using a sweater as a scarf just sort of tying it around your neck a little bit to the side i have a couple looks that i've done with that that i find really fun and it's a great way also just just expand your scarf collection like not all your scarves need to actually be scarves sometimes they can just be sweaters if you're someone who's into darker colors like me, but you like that same sort of minimalist, well-constructed look, I would suggest Komoli. I'm sorry if my pronunciation is off, but they have some really beautiful pieces. Both these brands are really fairly expensive. You can find some Orly stuff secondhand, especially if you're looking at like more primarily Japanese secondhand retail sites like Japanese eBay or things through Bai. You can find Komoli there as well, but I also think they're just great, great inspiration. One of the sections I really liked in this issue is called matching clothes, essentially sets, or in this case, there is some suiting as well. And it was a highlight on Yoko Sakamoto. I love Yoko Sakamoto. I haven't picked up a piece yet, but I do think it is actually a little less expensive. And I think their silhouettes are also wider, which is really nice for a matching set because I think it's a little bit more modern and also it makes it more casual. If you're gonna have a matching set and you know a suit which is very structured and also generally tighter to the body can feel formal. But if you have something that's like a pleated pair of pants that are a little bit wider and then a more rounded shape on top, I think it's nice to sort of have an ease to that garment. Some of these Yoko Sakamoto sets are in wool gabardine, which I'm not sure why wool gabardine is such a popular fabric in Japanese clothing specifically. A lot of Comme des Garçons and Yoji Yamamoto are also made out of wool gabardine. I think traditionally it is a British fabric, but I find that Japanese designers really take to it. And then there's also some really cute corduroy things and denim. Some other brands that I was looking at that have a similar suited and wide silhouette are The Day, which is a tough brand name to Google, but I can link it below. They have really nice stuff that are matching tops and bottoms. Though when I went on their website, a lot of it was sold out. I think you'd probably have to see who else stocks their stuff. Otherwise, there was also Porter Classic. Porter has some really cute sashiko jackets that I think I kind of want like not as a set, but just as a top. Porter Classic, I think, has more of a focus on corduroy, which I don't really own any corduroy. I feel like I did in the 2000s, but I don't anymore. And I, it just hasn't been in style maybe for a little bit, but it's still a classic fabric and it could be really fun, probably stand out. The last brand I wanna talk about, which is a little bit back higher up in the price range is Evan Kanori. It's not a Japanese brand, it's US based, I think San Francisco, but I had the privilege to go and see their clothing in person when they were in New York City a couple months ago and their stuff was just 
gorgeous and I would love 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 to get my hands on a piece one day so that's a little bit of the modern Japanese stuff there's also a real appreciation for American and British classics in this magazine and just in Japanese Americana in general starting off with Polo Ralph Lauren I think brands like this are really important and helpful just because they are classic I think they can be worn pretty much throughout time they never really go out of style and you can find so much on the secondhand market so if you're looking for a button down you can go on eBay and find Polo Ralph Lauren you can find double RL for much cheaper than you will for these newer brands that obviously come at a much higher premium and if possible then you can sort of mix things together which I think they do a good job of showing in these magazines that you have you know one or two of these more highly priced items and then you mix them in with your everyday you know button downs and flannels that you can thrift or find secondhand. To that point there's also a whole page just on flannels I mean flannels for fall not revolutionary but I thought it was a cute page and they specifically highlighted L.L. Bean which is, of course, a classic. And again, you can find so much of that on the secondhand market. One thing I would say for flannels that I personally like is not wearing one flannel as like an outside layer, but wearing it as like an intermediary layer. So you would have a t-shirt, your flannel, and then the jacket on top. And I think it creates almost like a nice bridge from one piece to the next. Onto the UK, I think one of the City Boys' favorite UK brands has to be Margaret Howell. And I'm a fan as well, though I'm a little unsure about the sizing. I think my brother actually bought a pair of pants at my suggestion, and they were a little tight on the butt because big butts run in my family. So beware men and women of all sizes of whether or not your butt will fit into their pants. But I love, love their stuff. I think it has great mix of this sort of like a little bit more of the minimalist modern with this total total UK classic. I do think Margaret Howell also does an interesting thing that a couple of different brands do here which is that they know that they have a huge Japanese audience and I think they make their clothes for that audience or they sell them in a certain way like I see a lot of MHL which is a, the, essentially a cheaper version of their brand and again, you can find both Margaret Howell and MHL on the secondhand market. I find that oftentimes you can buy them from Japanese secondhand sellers. So like if you're again on eBay and you see some MHL, often you're buying it from Japan, which is funny, but I just think that they have a huge, huge audience there. Finally, a new brand that I've been sort of picking up on is called Johnston's of Elgin. It's a Scottish sort of knitwear company. I think they do things besides knitwear. I, again, really, really heavily suggest buying this stuff secondhand. They sp specifically shout out these sort of like knitted long sleeve polos, which I think is a really cute style. And I saw three or four of them available secondhand online. When it comes to sweaters, especially, you know, people want to buy cashmere, people want to buy 100% wool. It's expensive and if it's not expensive then you should be a little suspicious of why it's not expensive you know all in all really well-made wool and cashmere sweaters are expensive to make they should be they should last a lifetime and so if you don't want to pay these high prices get them secondhand. I think almost every single one of my sweaters I have is secondhand I have like one from Uniqlo I think and one from Muji but otherwise this is I think it's wool is it cashmere this is a 100% cashmere sweater. Actually, I have heard of this brand before. Nadam. Nadam. It actually seems like they sell their cashmere at a fairly affordable rate. I would look more into their business practices before I bought from them. However, I also just found a sweater of theirs at the vintage store. It wasn't vintage store. I think it was probably Beacon's Closet. Whatever you call Beacon's Closet. It's not a thrift. I guess it's a secondhand reseller. I do love this sweater. It's very comfortable. Anyway, Johnston's of Elgin and beyond. I highly, highly suggest finding your wool and cashmere sweaters secondhand. You will save a lot of money and the environment. Go for it. Have fun. Before we move on to the last two categories, I want to talk to you about Squarespace. I personally started my first website using Squarespace a couple of years ago when I left my podcast production job at Marvel to start doing more freelance work. Since then, I've done everything from making my own podcast to working full-time at small production studios. 
but a name like mine is extremely easy to Google. So I wanted to make sure I had a clean and easy to navigate personal website for people wanting to learn more about me and the sort of work I do. In more recent years, I've been spending more and more time making fashion content online and my needs have changed. Because of that, I've added social media links at the bottom of my contact page, which took just a few clicks. I've also been recently getting DMs about providing personal styling services. So as a trial run, it was really easy for me to add that as a service product directly to my website and I can use Squarespace's payment tools to get paid directly when people book a session. Plus, you can set it up so customers have the option to pay the way they're used to by like credit card, Apple Pay, Klarna, etc. Finally, Squarespace has been doing an amazing job integrating all sorts of AI tools into their website building process. Their design intelligence suite includes something called Blueprint AI, which takes you through a sort of AI questionnaire and practically builds your website for you. Seeing how it works now, I'm considering starting my own website over from scratch. If you'd like to check any of that out, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, make sure to go to www.squarespace.com slash Persia to save 10% off your first website or domain. The next thing I want to talk about is workwear. There was one piece actually that stood out to me. It was this striped shirt by Buzz Rickson, which I looked it up and I was like, okay, maybe I feel kind of bad for liking this. But the pattern construction of this jacket is a reproduction of jackets issued by the U.S. Navy during World War II. It was used for work duties by prisoners of war. This US, I'm sorry, this U.S. Navy utility work jacket combines all of those historical characteristics and details with a modern fit for a more casual look and fashion purpose. Thank you, Buzz Rickson. Um, I thought it was really cute because I like the collar and I love a stripe. I think a stripe is like a very chill pattern to, you know, mix into your wardrobe. I have a mini section here called Workwear Mysteries because I posted a picture of a workwear jacket that I found that I was like gorgeous, delicious. I want it right now. Obviously this whole magazine is in Japanese, which I do not speak, read, or write. So I had to do a little bit of Google Translate down here to actually figure out where this jacket was from because the brand is there, but it's hard to see. It turns out this beautiful jacket that we all want is from this brand called Amachi. I did find a version of this jacket online. However, it was in green instead of this sort of nice ivory color. Pretty much everything is sold out. And there are a couple items from this brand that again are available online, secondhand. I don't wanna create a gold rush situation, but like if you want one, you have to buy one now. I think I saw like five items from this brand. The thing I don't fully understand is like, why did Popeye publish a picture of this jacket? It doesn't seem like it's available. The second workwear mystery is this brand called Yarmo, which it seems like there is the UK version of Yarmo manufactures a British workwear and uniform for over a hundred years. And they have smocks, they have pants, they have jackets, pretty like classic workwear stuff. However, it also seems like there's a Japanese version of the brand called Yarmo R-E-G-D. It says Yarmo is a long established factory brand founded in 1898 in England, primarily focused on workwear. They have smocks and all this stuff. But the stuff that I've seen online, I've actually seen Cluel post about Yarmo also recently, and stuff that's for sale in Japanese retailers and in this magazine are not what I'm seeing on their UK website, and the font for their brand is slightly different. I am wondering if this is like the clothing version of 7-Eleven. You know, we have 7-Eleven in the US. It's actually a Japanese company. In Japan, they have 7 and I Holdings. And they're represented very differently. Like this stuff you buy in a 7-Eleven in Japan is very different than the ones we have here. And I think that is because they are working with different kinds of customers. So even though it's like technically the same brand, the offerings are different. And I'm wondering if it's just some version of that. The last pillar I want to talk about here in Japanese Americana is the great outdoors or stuff meant for it. So things like Nanamika, you know, Gore-Tex, Arcteryx, uh, Snow Peak, things in that vein. As someone who has just recently come back from a hiking trip to the Dolomites, which is in northern Italy, I have been thinking a lot about hiking gear, and I really didn't want to buy that much stuff for that trip because I really don't go hiking that often, and I didn't want to spend like 200 300 400 500 dollars on hiking gear. This stuff can get really expensive really quickly. However, in a lot of the mountain towns we visited, there were so many hiking gear shops, obviously, and I did walk by some windows, doing some window shopping, and think, oh, I kind of like some of these funky hiking shoes, which is so up my alley. You guys know I love a weirder shoe. 
funnily enough, there's a whole page dedicated to hiking shoes in this edition of Popeyes. So I wanted to highlight a couple of my favorite shoes that I saw both in Italy and in this magazine. The first one is Scarpa. I do really like their sneakers. It has this really thick black rubber sole and then this little tiny toe cap. I really like that the laces actually go almost all the way down to the end of the shoe and they do a really nice job with the colors. I think this like bright purple with this bright orange is fun. They also have this orange and this burgundy. They have the saffron and the light green. I don't know, like I think they're having a really, really fun time doing these color matches. And I do really think this is a great shoe to have if you're just wearing your like selvage jeans and a jacket and a colorful shoe. I think that could be a very cute outfit. The other ones I liked were La Sportiva. I think my mom had a pair of La Sportiva hiking boots when we were there. Similar thing actually in that the laces go very far down the shoe and then it has this little black toe cap and I particularly like this orange accent color. Again, all of these are about strong colors for me. I think that helps sort of soften the blow of the fact that you're wearing a hiking shoe or a hiking boot is by making them in like really bright colors. This one from Mont Bell, it's called the Crag Hopper, has this dark teal color and then orange laces. I think again, those would go really well with jeans and that's how I envision people wearing them. Finally, some of my favorite bags that I saw in this issue and elsewhere are made from these techie fabrics. There's this one from the brand Brochure, which seems very much like a Japanese brand, uh, but it does seem like you can ship to your country. I don't know how much shipping would be. I like that it's just a really big carry-all tote, but it has this amazing texture. They actually had this other tote, which seemed to be all about the texture, from this brand called Siwa. This one almost looks like paper. I think that is on purpose to their design because they have a couple of different styles of bags and they all sort of look like paper bags, which I think is very fun. The last sort of techie bag I've been liking are these little pouches with these crossbody, very thin black straps. I would say it's a sacoche style. And you can find them from a couple of different companies. I'll link the one that was specifically mentioned in this edition of Popeye, but if you just look up Sakosh, I think you'll find a couple of different options. Let me know if you guys have your eye on anything that you've seen in this video or elsewhere. I personally don't know if I'm gonna be doing that much in terms of like city boy styling for myself this fall or winter. I think that might be because I've only ever been to Japan in the summer. I went once in July, I think, or was it late June? And then once in September. And so in my mind, like that's only, that's the only thing I can picture is the, those sort of spring summer looks. Maybe if I go back <laughs> for a more fall winter season and I have a better understanding of what that style looks like in person, I'll be able to recreate it myself, but we'll have to wait and see.